Hello, I'm children's author Philip Arder, and I'm going to tell you a bit about my upcoming new series, The Nine Lives of Furry Furry Bean Cat. Now, you can probably guess who the hero of the series is. Yes, she's furry, she's furry, and her name is Bean Cat. And she is, unusually for my books, actually based on a real character. People, when they read my books, they go, oh, is, was that a real person? Was that your mum, your dad, or did you know someone like that? Well, in this case, uh, Furry Furry Bean Cat was my cat. And I've got a photograph of her here. I don't have many great photos, but there she is looking very purry and very furry and very bean catty. And you can see she's got one sock pulled up there and one sock's fallen down there. And here she is looking pretty gorgeous as well. Look at that. Oh, yes. So, Furry Perry Bean Cat in real life lived with me till oh, she was in her 19th year, I think, 18th or 19th year, and she was an old lady, and she was the only living being I would let in my room when I was writing. I wouldn't let my wife, and I wouldn't let my friends, and I'd be in the big writing away, and being cut, with having a little old lady sneeze, and maybe curled up on my lap, and maybe in the corner. And I thought, well, cats are supposed to have nine lives, aren't they? Which actually means they get in so many different scrapes and things, but they land on their feet and they survive. So they've got nine chances of living, whereas we human beings <laughs> would probably be killed the first time. But I thought, hmm, what if nine lives meant something different? What if it meant that Fairy Fairy Bean Cat, my beanie, wasn't just sitting in my room sneezing all the time. Sometimes, when she was sneezing, she would wake up and be somewhere else. To me, she'd still be snoozing over there, but she'd be having an adventure somewhere else. And in the Nine Lives of Furry Perry Bean Cat, she has adventures in lots of different places. In the first book, she's a pirate captain's cat. In the second book, she's a Victorian railway cat. In the third book, she's a library, well, she's a library cat. She lives in the library. And in the fourth book, she's a witch's cat. So, whenever she wakes up, or she finds herself in a different place, having a different adventure. And of course, what makes it confusing for her is, Wherever she wakes up, to the people there and the other animals there, she's never gone away. So they would have seen her earlier that day and they'll see her later that day. So they'll talk to her, but she doesn't remember them. So we have lots of crazy adventures where she's trying to think, are they my friends, are they my enemies, what's going on? And she has very cattish behaviour. She doesn't really do much that cats wouldn't do, except maybe she uses her noggin a bit more, trying to help out, like in the railway cat some spines up to the wood and the pirate captain's cat her pirate captain gets kidnapped by a group of other pirates and in the library cat the library's going to be closed down and she wants to help the others to save it and in the witches well I'm not going to tell you what happens in the witches but I had great fun writing them because it was a really lovely chance to remember being a cat and to write about cats and to write fun and exciting things and I'm really hoping that uh, any child so enough of that. I must get back to my writing. It's very nice to talk to you. Do look out for the nine lives of furry furry being cat by me, Philip.